get started. All right, we are live. Live action. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So it is National Nutrition Month. Oh. So we decided what better than to discuss our daily essentials pack. We named this the daily essentials pack because these are supplements that are essential to our body, but everybody needs them. Okay. This is not just for certain conditions. We all need a multivitamin, men's and women's, uh, a vitamin D and a magnesium. Okay. Ryan, of course, is going to go into detail about all of these, but I wanted to start off by like, why, oh, you know, get the common question. I eat a very healthy diet. I do everything right. Why do I need to take supplements? Why do I need a multivitamin D and magnesium? I get this stuff from my food. But the biggest thing is, is nutritional absorption matters. And I'm going to read up a few things that really affect uh, the way our bodies absorb. So first of all, digestive issues, mm -hmm. um, excessive toxins in our body, which unfortunately, no matter how clean you think you are, unless you're living in a bubble, there's toxins everywhere. We can't avoid them. Pesticides on our food, which is also why we you know, try to do everything organic. But again, um, organic is very expensive as well as depending on where you live, you might not have access to certain organic foods. So you're getting those pesticides, processed foods, which we know anything that kind of comes in a box or a bag, which, um, you know, it's kind of like that convenience food that we all go to certain medications, yeah. which I know Ryan will hit on a lot. Um, and then just user variability, you know, our bodies are different. Our absorption rates are different. So um, you never know exactly what you're getting from these vitamins, but I will tell you, if you do specific, say, micronutrient testing, you're going to find that you are deficient in more things than you ever imagined. Um, another thing is our food is not as nutrient dense. That's a big one. Okay, this is due to a lot of it's due to increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the air, um, as well as uh, different farming practices, uh, trying to make more mass production. So our soil is depleted of the nutrients. And if our soil doesn't have all the nutrients and we're eating the food that's grown in the soil or, or the animal that's feeding on the food that's grown in the soil. Bottom line is our food is not as nutrient dense as it was, um, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And I was just reading a study based on like 1950, how significantly uh, less nutritious our food is. So our grandparents were doing great eating, you know, all um, homegrown and, you know, just natural foods, but unfortunately we're, we're suffering there. So, um, we'll get into that a little more too, but I'm going to pass it over to Ryan to kind of go into detail about our, uh, three supplements in the daily essentials pack, and then we'll get to some questions along the way. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. I think today's conversation is as much about micronutrients and nutrition as it is about the daily essentials. And Lisa touched on it. Essential means that your body or essential vitamin or mineral is what your body needs to be. You need to either get it through food or through a supplement. You, your body does not make it. So that's what the focus is today. And when we talk about vitamins and, and minerals, you know, why are they important? Because they're cofactors. They encode certain genes and proteins to make things like hormones. Guys, come on, hormones, ladies, hormones are a big deal. Uh, neurotransmitters. Um, obviously, serotonin and dopamine are the two most common that we hear about. So mood health and mental health. And then, of course, you know, other things like enzymes, which metabolize and rid our body of toxins and break things down for us. So, I mean, they're involved in just virtually every aspect of the body. And so we're going to start. Let's, we got to be kind of fast. There's a lot of content here, so I don't want to really kind of veer off too far. But we're going to start on the multivitamin. Roughly about nine out of 10 people are different deficient in at least one vitamin and mineral. So we're like, for us, it makes sense that we kind of created a multivitamin and we did it. We did this, we tailored this with, with purpose. We tried to make it intentional, right? So on the men's vitamin, um, there's like 24 vitamins and minerals. And we chose the ingredients to be the most bioavailable, the ones that are the most likely the, to absorb and to um, distribute throughout your body and be used by your body, right? So that's kind of the premise there. The men's version, we added lycopene because it's a very potent antioxidant that's been shown to benefit prostate health. We also um, have a lot of glycine, which is good for muscle health. We added a full B complex to both multivitamins. And Lisa, I know she gets a lot of questions on B vitamins, guys. So the B, the B complex, they're essential, they're water soluble. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really important. But one of the favorite things about this for me was like, when you're looking at vision support and, and um, vitamins for vision, based on the ARID study, 
and they're expensive. I mean, these vitamins are really expensive. So we were able to source lutein and zeaxanthine. They're the two uh, pigments in the marigold flower, those bright yellows and oranges. And they're actually very common in the back of our eye, in the retina. They are responsible for absorbing blue light. Now, look at us here. We're in front of the computer. I mean, our kids and yeah, I mean, we're sitting around on our devices and our phones constantly, constantly. Vision loss is happening at a much younger age and an unprecedented level. So to have all that in a multivitamin is, is just so huge. And that's men's vitamin. And by the way, they're all vegetable capsules. So soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, common allergen-free. And then the women's version, we added iron. We wanted to add some iron to support women's needs, uh, as well as we put in cranberry extract. Cranberry extract has been shown to be another, it's a potent antioxidant, very beneficial for urinary tract health. And of course, that is something that's more common in women than men, um, you know, and, and also has all the B vitamins. Uh, and again, the B vitamins are methylated forms. So we always try to go with what's most bioavailable. So the B12 is methylcobalamin. Uh, the folate is a methylated version of folate. So yeah, those are, that's a really important aspect to, to the multivitamin. Um, multivitamin, how to get the most out of it. Do you want to say something? Well, I was going to say yeah, just two, two questions that I commonly get. Uh, Ryan touched on the B vitamins, but yep. I constantly get, you know, my doctor says I'm low on B12. What can I do? It's typically, the, you know, the B12 they measure. But again, in the multivitamin. And another one that's very common is I am postmenopausal and I should not be taking iron. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have one without iron? Well, Women, you can take the men's. Yeah. <laughs> it is formulated without iron just because it says men. It's okay. Yeah. You can take it. So that's what I always recommend for those postmenopausal women that cannot take iron. Yeah. Now, I was just going to comment the best way to get the most out of it because of the B complex and there, the B vitamins are so involved in energy production that I would suggest taking it earlier in the day and taking it with food. So maybe that first meal of the day, whatever time that is, um, that's a, probably the best time to take the multivitamin. That's going to help you out the most. All right, let me just jump in real quick. I want to see if anybody has any questions because again, we're going to move through. I want to move through. There's quite a bit to cover. Um, Lisa, is there anything else that you want to touch on before we move on? Uh, not necessarily in the multi. Okay. I'm just trying to see right now some of these questions yeah, yeah, are yeah. coming in. Yeah, for unrelated to unrelated to what we're talking about right yeah. now, though. Unrelated. And you mentioned though taking this in the uh, in the morning more so because of the B vitamins and the the B vitamins energy. and also some of the pro some of the ingredients are fat soluble, so taking with food okay. um, is going to help is is beneficial. Right. So right. example, like you want to take it with a fat. Oh, oh or fat. In general, but in general, but yeah. Um. What yeah. would be a healthy fat though? Because we're going to talk about that with vitamin D. So what would be a healthy okay. fat for like the first meal? Okay. Um, adding some, I mean, eggs and avocado. Yeah. I mean, okay. Perfect okay. example there. Even Great just example. eggs itself, because you know that you've got the, the good healthy fats and the yolk. All right. So let's move on. We're going to move on. But I want to tell you something, guys. This is really important to keep in mind. You're going to notice that there's two other um, essential. Um, well, so we have vitamin D3 and we have magnesium. Now we did take those out of the multi. We also left out calcium. There's a reason behind that. There's a clinical reason for that. So when, like, if, if you're going to need to take calcium, I want you to focus on calcium. Buy the most bioavailable form of calcium. There are lots of different calciums available. Know how much you're taking. Monitor your levels. You may have to move it up and down. You can't do that when it's packed in a multivitamin. Magnesium, and that's kind of the premise with vitamin D. That's why we didn't put the vitamin D in there. Plus, it's a volume thing. How much can you actually get into these capsules? I mean, it's, but the vitamin D, it's the same kind of concept. It's fat soluble, so it can build up in the tissues. We wanted to leave it out of the multi so that you could custom tailor your dosing. Um, magnesium, we left out of the multi because it can actually interact with things. It can chelate and bind to certain things and other ingredients. So we felt, and the same thing, we wanted to have more control over our dosing and we'll get into that in just a moment. So if something chelates and binds, yeah, what, prevents absorption, it locks together. Okay. Chelation is just basically boop, locking together. can't go anywhere. It's stuck. All right. All right. That's layman's term for it. All right. Let's move on to, uh, say vitamin D. All right. Okay, do you so have anything on the, yeah. Do we miss anything? Are we good? Um, on the, on, multis, on the multis? On the multis? No, no, no. Let's okay. get through the D. All right, sweet. All right, we're going to do vitamin D. All right, guys, vitamin D, also known as the sunshine vitamin. That's because your body makes it, right? It is a, it, it's sort of essential. Your body does make it, but it's in response to sunlight. So the problem with that is that imagine northern climates right now. Imagine uh, overcast, rainy, cold skies. You're not getting out. You're not seeing the sun that much. Even for people that are in the warmer climates in the winter and getting out, you're still seeing clinical results in their blood work you know, insufficient. Sure. I mean, we live in Florida yeah. and I mean, the yeah. majority of people still. And we, we still obviously supplement, yeah. but there's a risk, there's a risk uh, reward. There's a, a, um, you have to like weigh out your, your benefits of being in the sun without sunscreen and exposing your sun, your skin to the sun. 
Um, and that's a whole lively discussion in itself, right? Mm -hmm. So sunshine vitamin, it can make, the body can make it. Um, and the same way that we do, we supplement with it. So when you supplement with vitamin D, we chose vitamin D3, it's the most bioavailable form. We added it with K2 because there's other benefits, increases the absorption of calcium, helps the vitamin D be more active. Um, but when this vitamin D3 is in your body, it goes to the kidney and it becomes a hormone called calcitriol. That calcitriol is known. It is very highly involved in the bone manufacturing process, really is. It recruits calcium, it brings in phosphorus, it works with the magnesium and the vitamin D. So it comes together to build bone health. But that's not the only thing that D is involved in, right? And so D is involved in, we know bone, right? We're talking about um, uh, uh, immune health now. You're seeing, geez, tons and tons of literature and studies supporting vitamin D for, for immune health. And of course, I'm seeing it now for energy production. Lots of studies are coming out with energy production as well. Um, my, some of you might ask, why can't we get it from our food? Why, 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 why? Well, you want to answer that one? Why we can't get it? Yeah, well, I mean, we can, but why don't we get enough? Well, the same. I mean, our food is... Unfortunately, our food is fortified with it. So that, mean, that means that <laughs> you, know, you can eat a lot of fatty fish and get it, mostly fatty fish, but then you'd have to go into fortified foods like cereals and milks. Right. But and also with the fish, then we have to worry about the mercury. So we're told also, yeah. you know, only consume so much. So it's just, it's like a yeah, 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 vicious yeah. cycle. You're just never getting So much. supplementing with vitamin D, absolutely. Okay, but how much and why? So vitamin D3, 2,000 units, okay? 2,000 units per soft gel in here. 2,000 is is our, our, what we view as the optimal amount of vitamin D3 to reach a healthy blood level. That, what's that healthy blood level look like? Well, it's measured in nanograms per milliliter. Next time you're a doctor, I would love for you guys, please, please, please ask to have a vitamin D test added on. So when you're looking at the hydroxy vitamin D levels, you're, the, the, again, it's like the, the, the recommended levels are seriously like insufficient in my opinion, right? But like, I like to see people over 30 nanograms per ml, right? Lisa likes to go over 50. What? Yeah, taking yeah. way over 50, but <laughs> vitamin D3, okay, 2,000 units a day should get you to 30, all right? It should get you to 30, maybe a little higher up to 50. It's up to you and your physician and your blood work to determine how high you want to go. But you need to be careful though, because vitamin D3 is fat soluble. What does that mean? It means it deposits into the tissues, okay? Depositing in the tissues means that it can become toxic at high amounts. So lots of questions come in why not a 10,000 unit? I'm a 10,000 unit type of person. Well, 10,000 units a day, you better be monitoring your blood levels. Uh, blood levels. I want you to be working with a physician if possible. And yeah, typically you know? your physician is the one that would recommend a vitamin D 10,000 based on your blood level. Yeah, yeah. Typically not sold in that high, but we also did, I mean, this is 60 capsules. Yeah, so yeah. we're understanding that some people might need mm -hmm. more than the, the 2,000. So there's 60 in there. So you could take two together, you could take three three yeah, together, but it's sure. the safest way to do this and the most you know effective way for, for the majority of people. Right, and that's exactly right. We want outcomes, we want we want results. And that's what this is all about, guys. Um, all right, questions on vitamin D. Let's, let's, um, there's just so many questions okay. now, it's hard to screen through and right. figure out what is relevant. Well, I was to gonna say, my questions are a lot of- Well, go ahead, you got well, No, we answer those, why 2000 units? And, you know, I we will tell you, I had one today, the recommended daily allowance um, is is 600 international units. I mean, we're going above that, obviously, yeah. on 2000, because 600 is... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, international yeah. units of the D3 plus K2, we just talked about that, it's 2000. Mm -hmm. Good question, Ken. Okay, yeah, because um, don't forget, one microgram, so these are measured in micrograms, one microgram is equivalent to 40 units. So this is 50 micrograms, that means it's 50 times 40 is 2000 units per soft gel, or per, sorry, per capsule. Per vegetable capsule. Oh, a real quick question. Yeah. Um, when to take? I, I know we talked about yeah. taking the flu. Why, yes, would yes, you, yes. why would you prefer taking this in the morning? Oh, yes. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for asking that. All right. Vitamin D in the morning with food. How about first meal? Because some people like to fast. All right. So first meal, take your vitamin D. Now studies are supporting the sleep awake cycle, right? Mm -hmm. They have this huge role in, in, in producing melatonin or getting the pineal gland in the body ready for sleep even early in the morning. It's I, that whole premise of when you first get up in the morning, you walk outside, there's hunters and gatherers, I mean, boom, sunlight. It's just, it's just triggering that sleep and awake cycle. So very important if you can just take it with your first meal. I don't mind you taking it with a multivitamin. It, it, that's not the issue. Um, you can take the, with them, but take it with food if possible. And if not, take, that's fine. Take it without food. It'll still absorb probably maybe not as much, but it, I'd rather you get it. Right. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah. And part of our recommendations for sleep, if someone, you know, um, emails me about mm -hmm. they need help sleeping, what I recommend, mm -hmm. it's always what, a, you know, take a, a, your D in the morning and take your magnesium in the evening, later afternoon. So <clears throat> you have 
both of our two of our, our sleep help aids here. Yep. I'm sorry, guys. I'm bouncing back. Yes, we did say females can take the male vitamins if you're trying to avoid iron. Yes, that is okay. Um, we did not say that iron cannot be taken premenopausal. That is not what we said. No. Post post menopausal, most doctors will recommend that you do not take iron, but that's that's based on what your doctor. Mm -hmm. If your doctor has mm -hmm. not told you, because you, you, they'll know based on your blood work as well. But you're not losing the iron every month when you're post menopausal. So that that's yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and all the everything that's contained in the multi is really designed to be well absorbed. Do you see something? Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So we're running about quarter after. My goal is to be done about twenty after twenty five at the latest. We're going to move on. How many international units would you need to take in order to start talking about overdosing of vitamin D? Uh, that's about that. yeah, what is overdosing? There's really no no easy way to say. Um, you could start talking about blood levels over 100 nanograms per ml. I mean, it seems to be dangerously high and toxic. It can go higher, but again, under under the supervision of a physician only. And my and is I my recommendation. Too, I'm just speaking of. I, I saw it this morning. Um, and I think I'm going to do, oh yeah, taking vitamin D could help prevent dementia. It was a, mm -hmm. a new oh, study in medical that. that I saw. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll post a, a link to it on um, our yeah. social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, let's we'll All right, go guys. to the- Let's do it. The mag. All right, let's go to the magnesium. Freaking magnesium is magnificent. It's the macro it mineral. Really is. Now, it, I don't, macro mineral, I'm not even sure that's a real thing, but macro meaning like, you know, it, it, I mean, you have to take a lot of magnesium. It's, you have to take more of this mineral than anything else. Um, in foods, yes, it's in some foods, um, but even so, we need to get some out of the supplements. So why, why magnesium? Why is it so important? Why is it so magnificent? 300 biochemical reactions in the body, definitely involved in like mostly enzymatic re reactions, so enzymes. It's, it's responsible for everything from, well, okay, how about this? We know for sure it's involved in heart and blood pressure, right? If you're a pregnant, if you're a pregnant woman and you go in and you have preeclampsia and high blood pressure, that hospital is going to put you on magnesium. Right. They're going to use magnesium to reduce your blood pressure. And it's a known thing. Guys. And look at the literature, it supports it 100%. Um, and what Ryan said, though, it's, it's involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. So mm -hmm. think about if you're deficient in magnesium, all these reactions that are taking place all the time, every single day. So, you know, there's, there's a, a gap there. It's not, there, these reactions are not going to take place if you're deficient in this amazing. Yeah. And it is, yeah. it is essential. Body doesn't make it. You've got it. You got to supplement with it, with it. All right. So we're talking about blood pressure, heart regulation. Yes, of course. We know bone health guys. So we just talked about vitamin D. We talked about what K2 it helps it increase the, the calcium uptake. And of course it works with magnesium, bone health, big time, well-documented, supported hundred percent. Um, stress response, definitely being used now in the, in the stress market big time because it's also very beneficial in the sleep. So sleep stress has a lot of, a lot of stuff in common. Um, so, and I'm going to pause there and just talk about the way I like to use magnesium because I want to make, make sure I make a point of that. So magnesium, I do not take it with, I don't have to take it with food. I do not take it with my multi or my D. I use it right about lunchtime and again, before bed. So two capsules a day, I split it. I do one at lunch, one before bed. Helps with the afternoon stress kind of response that kind of amps up. And then again, helps with sleep before before bed. Um, I take my two right before bed because awesome. I, I've always struggled with sleep. So anything that's going to help me sleep naturally yeah. and better. Mm -hmm. So I take both mine right before bed. Awesome, yeah. Uh, muscle, nerve, and energy. Magnesium, muscle, nerve, and energy. It is, it's, just, it's responsible for building muscle, maintaining muscle, uh, helping with recovery, helping with ATP production. ATP is the energy uh, the body makes, the body uses for fuel. Um, things that deplete magnesium, caffeine, sugar, stress, like, like chronic stress. Um, alcohol. Yep, yeah, alcohol, alcohol, anxiety. And I said exercise. Exercise? Mm, I don't know if you said that. Exercise. And guys, medication. And not saying exercise is bad, no, no, but yeah. <laughs> too much, like a lot of strenuous well, exercise reason. will, will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, those are that's your electrolytes. It's yeah. an electrolyte. Magnesium is electrolyte. Just goes. Got to replace. You're it. flushing it out. Um, drug, uh, so drugs, medications, guys. Um, Drug-induced nutrient depletion. You touched on it early on. Early on, huge. This is not just magnesium. It's so many different, different, different nutrients that it's actually a class of its own. Drug-induced nutrient depletion. If you go and you have high blood pressure and your physician puts you on a water pill, the first thing that's going to happen is your body's going to start losing magnesium. So a diuretic, I mean, boom, there goes your magnesium. It's just one example. 
And so another, another reason why to make sure you're supplementing with, with uh, magnesium, muscle cramps, leg cramps, another area that is very commonly used for magnesium. Um, forms of magnesium. Yeah. All right, because that's a big question. We get yes. that a lot. All right, we chose magnesium glycinate, predominantly glycinate and gluconate because there's a lot of magnesium supplements out there that use things like magnesium citrate. Yeah, sure, it might absorb a little bit, but it's also gonna cause diarrhea along the way. I mean, a lot of it has to do with gut tolerance. Like how much can, your, can you handle before it starts making diarrhea? Um, obviously a, a, enough magnesium, it will cause diarrhea, but so other forms are just less desirable. And then magnesium oxide, super common, doesn't absorb. It's like the worst form of magnesium. I would never recommend it, but unfortunately we see it in a lot of supplements. So look it up guys, magnesium glycinate, magnesium gluconate, two of the most like well-known studied, supported, like definitely the best forms of magnesium. Oh. Yep. Cool. What else? You answered my, answer my questions there. Oh, awesome. Did <laughs> um, you do vegetable capsule? Soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, common allergen-free. Let's see what other questions are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I do actually get, uh, I do want to say that the vitamin D is um, is not vegan. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's from vegan. sheep's wool. It, it, the, the capsule is, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the D comes from sheep's wool because I do get that a question a lot. Um, all right, look, guys, that's 21 minutes afternoon. Oh, All right. you know, let's just uh, one, yeah, go one for quick it. little plug here. So yeah. this lovely yeah. pack right here, okay? This is only $29.95. So yeah. for the three supplements, you check, you check, but you select <laughs> your men's or women's and then the other two come with. Yeah. Okay, so again, these three supplements, $29.95. Mm. For members that is like ridiculous three supplements are 29.95 if yeah. you are not a member and you want to buy retail 49.95 still a great deal but obviously you know uh, members get um the better of the deal yeah sure all right and, and any questions other things that we did not touch on anything you want to know about this please feel free to reach out we are happy to help you in anything product related um what else yeah, shoot, us, shoot us an email yeah oh guys one other thing too it's not here but it probably should be it might be in the future and it's kind of i'm not sure if it will totally but factor four it should be on this little podium it because it's an essential in my mind it totally fits the daily essentials pack it supports the body in so many ways it complements these products incredibly well but for right now it's not part of the daily essentials pack if you go the daily essentials pack route, make sure you guys add in the factor four. It's it, it's really important yeah. for, for sure. And if you want to learn more about the factor four, um, Ryan and Ben did a great uh, oh, yeah. YouTube video, our video for YouTube on it. So check our channel, scroll up, find the factor four. You can learn all about that one as well. Yeah. And this would be considered foundation. Like obviously we're just making sure that you understand where we view, how we view the foundation of, of health and, and micronutrients. We realize that supplements are one part of it. The other pillars of health for my, from, from, for me anyway, are, you know, obviously nutrition, which I'll bring in supplements into that. Um, hydration is part of that nutrition category. So stay hydrated, make sure you're working on your stress and that sleep response. I mean, work on those two together. Um, fitness, building in that exercise, moving move more, smooth your body, uh, of course. And then socialization, getting out and about and interacting with people for those areas that can help yep. improve your overall health and increase your longevity. Right. And remember supplements are to supplement a healthy diet. Correct. Okay. So you got to do it all. You Correct. got to Correct. do it all. Correct. Cool. Right. And in honor of again, national nutrition month, let's do this all together. All right, guys. All right. All right. 23 minutes after we are out of here. Y'all have a great week. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.